Well, hello, and welcome to GetChemistryHelp.com. My name is Dr. Kent, and in this video, I'm going to work a few more practice problems on atomic mass calculations. But instead of just solving for the average atomic mass as we did in our previous lesson, now we're going to do some more advanced calculations, and we're going to solve for the abundance and the isotopic mass of various individual isotopes. Now, if you haven't yet watched our previous videos, including the lesson on atomic mass, as well as atomic mass calculations part one, I suggest you watch those first. You may also want to click the link below and go to getchemistryhelp.com where you can print out a PDF worksheet of all of these problems so you can print it out and follow along with me as I work them. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump in and try the first problem. Now it says that magnesium has three naturally occurring isotopes. The first one is magnesium 24, which has an abundance of 78.99% and an isotopic mass of 23.9850 AMU, or atomic mass units. The second isotope is magnesium-25, which has an abundance of 10.00% and an isotopic mass of 24.9858 atomic mass units. And then magnesium-26, which we don't know anything about. So it wants me to find the percent abundance and the mass of magnesium-26. Well, we do know a few things. We know that all three isotopes have to add up to be 100%. So if I take 100% as the total of all three, I can find the abundance of magnesium 26 by subtracting the abundance of magnesium 24 and the abundance of magnesium 25. So let's just do that first. So if I subtract 78.99% for magnesium 24 and the 10.00 percent for magnesium 25 I find out that magnesium 26 is whatever is left which is 11.01 percent okay so there's part of my problem I know the percent abundance is 11.01 percent so now I still want to find the isotopic mass of that isotope. Well, I know that the abundance and the mass of all three has to combine to give me the average, and the average I already know because it's right here on the periodic table. It's 24.31. So I know that all of them have to add up to be 24.31 AMU. Okay, so let's go ahead and get rid of our periodic table and work this out. So abundance times mass of magnesium 24. Remember, the percent abundance has to be converted back to a decimal, so we move that decimal two places to the left, because to find a percentage, you multiply a decimal by 100. To convert a percent back into a decimal, you divide it by 100. So 0 0.7899 times its mass, which was 23.9850, AMU plus the second isotope, magnesium 25. Well, 10.00% becomes 0 0.100 times its mass, 24.9858 AMU plus the third one, magnesium 26. Well, we know the abundance, we just found it was 11.01%, so 0. 1101 times its mass. Well, we don't know its mass, so we're going to solve for that. I'll just call it x. So let's go ahead and work this out and solve for x. So 24.31 AMU is going to equal 0.7899 times 23.9850. I get 18.946 AMU. Now again, I should technically only have four significant digits because of this one, but I know I'm not done here. I'm going to do some more operations, so I'm going to keep one extra. And just mark the fourth to remind myself it should really be four. Plus, this one gives me 2.4986. Again, I should really only have four, but I'm going to keep an extra one. Plus 0.1101 x. Okay, well I need to get the x term by itself and all of the non-x terms together. 
So I need to move these both onto the left side. So I'm going to subtract 18.946 and 2.4986 from both sides. So subtract 18.946, subtract 2.4986. I'm doing the same thing over here. I'm going to subtract these to make these go away. So that leaves me 2.8 six five four amu and that's equal to our x term which is left so 0 0.1101 x okay well real quickly how many significant digits should this have well i'm subtracting now so remember we use places let me go back and mark these to remind myself so this one was out to the hundreds place this one was out to the hundreds place this one was out to the thousandths place, so the fewest is hundreds, so it should really be right here. So I'll go ahead and mark that, but I'll go ahead and just keep the extra, but, but just mark it to remind myself it should really only be out to the hundredths. So now I'll take 2.8654, so I need to divide both sides by 0 0.1101 to get it by itself. So I get... 26.0 AMU equals X. Because again, this really had three significant figures. This had four, so the answer will have three. So that is the isotopic mass of X, magnesium 26. So it's about 26.0 AMU. And that makes sense because again, it was magnesium 26. So it should be pretty close to 26. Great. So let's look at number two. Now, in number two, it says boron has two naturally occurring isotopes. Find the percent abundance of both boron-10 and boron-11. Given the isotopic mass of boron-10 is 10.0129 AMU, and the isotopic mass of boron-11 is 11.0093 AMU. Now, in this case, they don't give us either abundance, so we have to find both of the abundances. But there are a few things, though, that we do know. Again, we know what the average has to be because it's right here on the periodic table. So both of them have to combine to give me 10.81. So I can go ahead and start with that. So that's what both isotopes have to combine to give me. So go ahead and hide our periodic table here. I also know, what do both abundances have to add up to be? Well, they both have to add up to be 100%. So the abundance of boron-10 plus the abundance of boron-11 have to be 100%. If one of these is just X, what would the other one be? Well, if I said boron-10, for example, was X, well, that means boron-11 would be 100% minus X. But, as we showed before, when we're doing calculations, we don't use percentage. We turn it back into decimal mode. So I divide this by 100. So this is really going to become boron 10 will be x. If I move that over, it's going to become 1 minus x. So they both have to add up to be 1. Okay, so if I call boron 10's abundance x times the mass of boron 10, 10.0129 amu plus the abundance of boron-11, which we're calling 1 minus x, times its abundance, 11.0093 amu. Well, now we can work this out and solve for x. So I got 10.81 atomic mass units equals 10.0129 x. Now on this one, I have to factor this in twice. So I have to multiply it by the negative x and then multiply it by the 1. So 11.0093 minus 11.0093x because again we're going to factor this into it. So now I need to group my non-x terms with my x terms. So here is a non-x term, here is a non-x term. And here are my two x terms, so I need to group these together. 
So I'll go ahead and try to move 11.0093 over here to the left side. So to do that, I'll subtract 11.0093 from both sides. And then I'll add 10.0129x, subtract 11.0093x on the right side. So I get negative 0 0.1993 AMU. And then on this side, when I combine the X terms, I get negative 0 0.9964X. Okay, so how about our significant digits? Well, this one, again, we're subtracting, so we're out to the hundredths place. This one's out to the ten thousandths, so the fewest is hundredths. It should really be right here, so I'll just mark it. This one is out to ten thousandths, minus this one out to ten thousandths, so this should be all the way out to ten thousandths, so that one's fine. Well, now we have to get x by itself. So to get x by itself, I have to divide both sides by this number. So I'll divide both of them by 0 0.9964, actually negative. Divided by negative 0 0.9964. So x equals, and it should only have two significant digits because of this. So 0 0.20 is my x. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, again, we set x equal to the abundance of boron 10, right? So this is the abundance of boron 10. So boron 10 would have an abundance of 0.2, or as a percentage, we'd multiply it by 100, and it would be, 20%. How about boron 11? Well, boron 11 was 1 minus x. So what's 1 minus 0 0.20? Well, that would be 0 0.80 or 80%. So there we go. We got the abundance of boron 10 and boron 11. Okay, so just real quickly, does this answer seem reasonable? Well, 20% of it weighs about 10. 80% of it weighs about 11. So the answer should be about 80% of the way between 10 AMUs and 11 AMUs. And we saw the average was, it was 10.8, which is almost exactly 80% of the way between 10 and 11. So this answer does indeed seem reasonable. Okay, one last calculation. And this one is very similar to our last one. Chlorine has two naturally occurring isotopes, chlorine 35 with an atomic mass of 34.9689 and chlorine 37 with an atomic mass of 36.9659. If chlorine has an average atomic mass of 35.4527, what is the percent abundance of each isotope? So once again, we have two isotopes, two masses, and we have to find both abundances. Now this time, Instead of looking up the average off the periodic table, they just went ahead and gave it to us out to four decimal places. So that's what they both have to add up to be. So we'll do the same thing as we did last time. We'll set one of them equal to x, and the other one will have to be 1 minus x. So we'll just do it again. I'll just make the, the first one. Chlorine 35 can be x, which means chlorine 37 can be 1 minus x. Okay, so x abundance times the mass of chlorine 35, 34.9689 AMU, plus the abundance of chlorine 37, well that we made 1 minus x, times the isotopic mass 36.9659 AMU, so again, we go ahead and factor this in. So I'm going to multiply this by 1 and then multiply it by negative x. So 35.4527 equals 34.9689x plus, so 36.9659 times 1 is just 36.9659. And then 36.9659 times negative x is negative 
x. So once again, we're going to group our non-x terms together and our x terms together. So here's the x terms. So I'll leave these on this side. I'll move this non-x term over here to the left side. So I'm going to subtract both sides by 36.9659. Subtract 36.9659. So that gives me over here negative 1.5132. And then I'm going to combine these two x terms. And that gives me negative 1.9970. And notice it should be zero because this is out four decimal places to the ten thousandths. And I subtracted a number out four decimal places to the ten thousandths. So our answer should be out four decimal places to the ten thousandths. So you will need to put your placeholder zero back in here. How about this one? Same thing. Ten thousandths, ten thousandths should be ten thousandths. Well now, I need to get x by itself. So let's divide both sides by negative 1.9970. Negative 1.9970. So x winds up being equal to, well, 5 sig figs divided by 5 sig figs should be 5 sig figs. So 0 0.75773. Okay, so that's x. Well, what is x again? Oh, x we said equal to the abundance of chlorine 35. So chlorine 35. If I were to convert that back to a percentage, I would multiply this by 100. That would be 75.773%. Well, how about chlorine 37? Well, that would be 1 minus x. So 1 minus 0 0.75773 is 0 0.24227. Well, that was equal to the abundance of chlorine 37. So if I multiply this by 100 to get back to a percentage, that would be 24.227% chlorine 37. Okay, so one more time, does this answer seem reasonable? Well, three-fourths of it has a mass of about 35. A fourth of it has a mass of about 37. So it should be closer to 35 than 37, and the average was indeed closer to 35 than 37. So yep, this seems like a reasonable answer. Well, I hope you enjoyed these practice problems on atomic mass calculations. As always, be sure and leave me a comment down below to let me know what you think, and hit the subscribe button so you can be notified as soon as new video lessons are posted. And we'll see you back here next time at GetChemistryHelp.com. Thank you.